Hi guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. It's great to see you all again. Uh, sorry about the hair being wet and I've just been washing bathrooms all morning. I've got another week off work because I'm training from home, which is fun. So I'm getting some stitching done while the guy's doing the lecture. Um, of course, the training is from 8 p.m. till 4 a.m. local time, which sucks a little bit, but uh, still, I'd rather be at home. <laughs> it's like a no pants work week fun <laughs> um yeah so how have you all been I'm good um I had a weird dream the other night weird weird dream I don't know why I was dreaming about this it was just before I woke up and I always remember those dreams the best um but I was dying threads I already posted this on stitch mania so some of you have heard this <laughs> I was hand dying threads and I don't and I was dyeing this one, and the colour of this one thread I did was definitely punishing the chickens. Punishing the chickens. That's the colour of the thread I was dyeing. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I don't know what colour punishing the chickens is. I kind of like to think it's like white, yeah, like white and yellow and red. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Should I go and talk to someone about my dreams? That's really weird, right? Punishing the chickens. Um... So, you guys are awesome. You guys are the best. Floss Tube is amazing, right? I have had so many great comments and um, I've been enabled by so many Floss Tubers and I've just reached 500 subscribers, which is amazing to me. I can't believe that 500 people care about what I have to say, <laughs> what I have to say and show about my stitching, but I'm really happy because I love it and if I and if other people love what I do too that I'm really happy to share it with them so I've been meaning for a while to I've said for the last couple of videos that I'm going to talk about some of the comments I've received um and I didn't do it last video because that was the whip all the whips video um and I didn't do the video before because that was like a last minute unplanned look at all my haul video <laughs> um so this video I've got some catching up to do and I'm going to go over some of the comments I've received so um, when I was talking about um, looking for Asian stitching, Vietnamese and Cambodian, Malaysian and Thai, um, I got some really good comments. Um, Kristen Choate recommended pin stitch. Um, thank you. It's really, I can't get to the pin stitch website, but I found pin stitch patterns on other websites. Um, Kelly and the Tipsy Stitcher. Oh, Kelly and the Tipsy Stitcher, they recommended color castate color cascades fabrics to me um, for a fabric of the month club and I've looked into it and I've been thinking about fabrics and fabric of the month club and I've decided I'm going to rather than joining a club I'm going to just let myself buy probably two fat quarters of fabric from anywhere I want every month um, because then I can get the count and color I want um, and I can try out different dyes and things so that's what I'm going to do um, Button Addict also recommended some Asian stitching to me. Thank you. Um, Button Addict recommended Soda Stitch, Pinoy Stitch and Artisy, and they all have really cool Asian patterns, but um, a lot of them are full coverage and I don't really want to do a massive full coverage piece. Um, but some of them are really cool. Soda Stitch is super cutesy. I don't know if I'm into the very cutesy style, but some of them are so cute. <laughs> um, oh, and Jill Swank is a genius. Jill, you're a genius. Um, she recommended that on my on my um, Quaker stitch along, because I started it in Singapore. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, this, this um, what's that called? A seahorse. She said, why don't you turn your seahorse into a merlion, like the Singapore merlion? I mean, what a genius idea. I'm just trying to find a piece of paper. Ugh, you're definitely going to fall off if I do that. Oh, that, that'll do. So I could turn this little seahorse into a merlion. And I'll stick a picture of a merlion here. See, it looks kind of similar. Jill, I think you're a genius. Um, I'm not very good at... Not very artistic. Not sure if I can actually do that or not. Um, but I think I'll give it a go. <laughs> Jill, genius, thank you. Um... So there's some progress. I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, 
Diana Jones asked me, how do I use an iPad for my stitching? Um, that's a weird question because I don't have an iPad and I don't use one. <laughs> um, but Diana, there are tons of um, people who are not tons. There are a few people who have done videos online of how they use particular apps on iPad. Um, Easy PDF and Goodreader are ones that I, that come to mind. Um, I'm actually getting an iPad next month, I think, um, for the purpose of using those apps to um, track my stitches on my full coverage pieces. So, yeah, I hope that helps you, Diana. Um, Anne Bartel very kindly pointed out that I could find online a Janlin to DMC conversion um, for the Dream a Dream um, project I'm working on. Um, I can't believe I didn't think of that. You're also a genius, Anne. Thank you. Um, I will look for that. I'll probably be picking up Dream a Dream in a couple of months. Um, I'll talk about that when I get to it. Not yet. Um, and Ingeborg from A Stitch Too Far, that's her Floss Tube channel. Ingeborg is also planning on doing the garden party and she said she's thinking of doing it on Phantom by Picture This Plus, um, which looks like this. Picture. Um, and wouldn't you know it, I had just been looking a few days earlier after I received the pattern and thought that that fabric would be perfect because of the <laughs> sort of dark blue and dark purple background you know um it really will look like a nighttime scene and the lanterns will glow really nicely and the dresses will look gorgeous against that fabric um and then Ingeborg said that's what she's gonna do so, <laughs> so but anyway I'm kind of thinking I might not start that pattern um because I might be starting something else but I'll tell you about that in a minute too <laughs> um so sorry Ingeborg she said she's gonna start it in May I might not start it with you. No pressure. She, <laughs> I love the enabling. She said, well, I'm going to start it in May. So, you know, you could start it with me then. No pressure. No pressure. Hint, hint. <laughs> um, yeah, but I might be starting a different Mir Mirabilia in May. We'll get onto it. Um, and I've been enabled by other people. Oh my gosh. Have you seen these Disney princesses? I'm going to put pictures in here. Um, they're on an Etsy shop. The Etsy shop is Pinky the Pink. Um, they are, they're not full coverage stitched. They actually have backstitch and beads and metallics and they, they're beautiful. They're like, um, they're so detailed. They're not just full coverage. They're really pretty. They're as detailed as, a, I mean, maybe as detailed as a Mirabilia or a Lavender and Lace or something. And I'm in love with them. <laughs> and I want to do all of them. I'm not even a big Disney princess person, but I especially love, um, Jasmine and um, Esmeralda, oh my gosh, and Merida's gorgeous, and I want to do all of them. Oh, I can't choose. Um, they're quite expensive as well, which you'd expect for a chart with that much detail. It wasn't just put through a computer program, you know. Um, she's hand charted this. Um, they're based on original artwork by someone from DeviantArt. I'll write the name down, or you can look on her shop to find that out. Um, yeah, that's Pinky the Pink on Etsy. Yeah, um, I think they're limited edition charts. I saw these on Caitlin in Stitches, and then I saw them again on Atlantica Dream Stitches, and then I saw them again on someone else's um, channel, um, that, but I didn't write that person down. So, like, in one week I saw them three times, but they were all old videos from, like, a year ago. <laughs> um, I've been catching up with Floss Tube, guys. I, my Floss Tube watch list is still 300 videos long so if I haven't commented on your video yet it probably means well I don't comment anyway so it probably means I haven't watched it yet <laughs> um what else oh on Sinesta Sinesta Two Smiles um her YouTube sorry her Floss Tube channel I was watching and she has this gorgeous chart she also got from Etsy it's called Pocket Watch Pits Pocket Watch Pixie and I'll put a picture here. It's so pretty. I love it. Um, it's from an Etsy shop called Eye of the Magpie by Kate. I love that. I want to do that too. I could easily spend a thousand dollars on just patterns from Etsy. Oh, I want them all. Um, and someone else who enabled me was Pipstitch. Um, he mentioned that 
Um, a couple of people were all thinking of starting Peacock Tapestry by Teresa Wensler. And I also have the kit in my stash and I'm thinking I'd really love to start it. Um, and I'll take any excuse to do so. <laughs> so maybe I could start it with these guys. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, the whips are going to be out of control if this goes on, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, isn't that though? It's fun though, you know. I love stitching. I want to start all the things. It's crazy. Uh, so I went up to Sydney a couple of weeks ago, visited my friend Tara. Hi Tara, I know she's watching. <laughs> um, she used to stitch with me on night shifts. Um, and now she's gotten back into stitching since she saw me. <laughs> I've always been an enabler for her. Um, yeah, so she's back into stitching. Um, she's finished something gorgeous and started, no, and picked up some old whips. She's doing a Teresa Wenser as well. The, um, the Peacock Garden Tapestry, I think it's called, or English Garden Tapestry with peacocks on it. Um, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. She finished a dimension, Dimensions Winter Scene, Dimensions Gold something. I'll put pictures up as I'm talking, if I can find the right pictures. <laughs> um, but she sent me a photo of a finish that I did a long time ago that I talked I talked about in my whip video. And it was a set of smalls I made for her. Um, the, the chart was Cherry Blossom Spring by the Cat's Whiskers. I'll put the picture up here. This is what I made for her. Um, and I finished them off myself and I was so proud of my finishing job. Um, it's obviously a needle case, a scissor case, and a scissor fob. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys that I do actually finish things, and I do FFO things. <laughs> I just haven't done it for a really long time. Uh, and on the way back from Sydney, um, I went with Tim, and we stopped at Victoria House Needle Crafts, um, which is a little cottage that is full of cross stitch, the whole cottage, like room after room full of cross stitch, a whole room full of fabric and threads, like three rooms full of charts. There's a whole room full of mirabilia and lavender and lace charts. Like it's crazy. <laughs> it's so fun. And Tim has never been to a cross stitch shop before. So I think that was an experience for him. And because he was with me, I walked through really quickly and didn't spend too much time looking at things. Um, everything there is really expensive. Oh my gosh, you know, I just got the little buttons and beads, those little kits that are that big. Um, they have them there for $30, and the one I got from 123 Stitch was like $9. That's the price difference we have here in Australia, folks. It's crazy. Um, but I did buy something from there. I bought um, a thread to go for my Tranquility, um, Tranquili Quaker Tranquility Sampler. I'll put a picture in while I'm thinking of the name. Um, I bought another orange thread because I'm not happy with the oranges I already have picked up. Um, and I also bought this Mirabilia pattern at the Met. And the reason I got this is because it was on my shortlist for patterns I want to stitch this year or sometime. Um, but the funny thing was, I was in the Mirabilia room with Tim and he was looking at the wall of patterns. Like there's a whole wall covered in patterns and he just pointed to this one and he said, I like that one. <laughs> And I was like, agog that he would point at something and actually say he liked it. Um, so I got that. This isn't the one I'm going to be starting this year though. Um, I also got two more. Um, I bought some out of print Mirabilia's uh, from, an on from Amazon, an online shop on Amazon. I got the Dreamer. Oop, it says 1994. It's Mirabilia number eight. And I got, I love this one. I got Mother's Arms. This one is Mirabilia number 11. Um, so they're old ones. I love this one. I'm gonna stitch this one when I'm pregnant with a baby, which I don't know when that's gonna happen, but hopefully it'll happen one day. And I'm gonna stitch this one because it's just so pretty. Um, so there's those two, but those aren't the ones I'll be starting this year. Um, I'll tell you now. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to the Mirabilia, no, the Linen and Threads cross-stitching retreat and Nora Corbett is also coming. So everybody calls it the Mirabilia, the Mirabilia retreat. It's so exciting. So I put my name on the wait list for this in like December or something, <laughs> um, because it was sold out. Of course it's in the Blue Mountains, uh, which is North of Sydney. It's about three and a half hours drive from here. 
from Canberra. Um, uh, I'm going for the weekend. It's the 6th to the 7th of May. Nora Corbett will be there. Tons of Stitches will be there. Um, mostly Australian people, I think. Um, I know Vintage Chic Stitches is going to be there. Hi, Joe. Um, I think she said Pyrex Stitcher is going to be there. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And for the people who are going, we get an exclusive Mirabilia design or Nora Corbett design. Yay! So I think that's what I will be starting. <laughs> um, I ordered the kit, um, which is available to attendees only. Um, and with hand dyed fabric. I'm so excited! So that will be my Mirabilia start for this year, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Sorry guys, I'm not trying to rub it in, but I'm going to the retreat and you're probably not. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Tara! Um, I tried to get Tara to come with me, but I think it's sold out. So unless she's already booked her ticket, she might have to go on the waiting list. Um, yeah, that's all I have written down. Um, but I've got some progress to show you and a couple of finishes. Okay. Where to start? So, you already saw this. I did some progress on... Oh, there we go. That works better. On the Quaker Stitch Along. Yeah, I, st I should have really finished part four before I stopped, but I didn't. Um, I'll pick this up again some other time when I'm ready to stitch it. Part 9 has just come out. Um, the parts are so quick to stitch up. I think I did like two and a half parts when I picked it up for two days. So I'll, um, I'll catch up. I'm not worried about that. Um, then what did I do? Oh, then I finished Paddington Bear in Paris. This has been going since December of last year. And this is the third one of the series. I've already finished... Paddington in London and Paddington in uh, New York and the only one I have to do now is Paddington in Sydney and I've just started that um, and I've been trying to frame them look oh doesn't that look cute I've been ever framing a lot of things um, but I've got a problem with all of them I the the, the frame isn't big enough for, for the back thing to go on like I can't push it down far enough to close it and that's the problem I've got with all of them I bought five millimeter foam core board like this and I think it's too thick so I'm gonna to have to go and buy they have three millimeter I'll buy that and dry it but I think even that will be too thick so if that's too thick as well I don't know what I'm gonna do I might have to I don't know what can I use that's thinner than three millimeter foam core board um, I'm glad I checked before I laced this up because, yeah, would have been annoying to undo the lacing. So yeah, I've got to do this again. Unfortunately, I can't even get this out now. Um, yeah, I just pinned it and then I was going to lace it and remove the pins. Um, yeah, someone help. What do I do about this? Um, so that's one finish. This was my second finish of the year. The first was the one I can't show you until Valentine's Day. My second finish was... One of the things I wanted to finish this year, one of my old whips, and that was this little guy. This was a permanent of Copenhagen kit, unnamed, just a little kit. It's cute. This took me 10 hours of work. I'd done like two threads on it. Um, yeah, that's the kit there. That was very quick. That's the kit there. Yeah, it's pretty, right? I love these little cute, tiny little finishes. Uh, and they usually come in series like there'll be three or four with these colors different sort of scenes. I like them um, More progress. I have completed a page on Game of Nouveau That's my second full coverage page finish for the year I've had a very productive January. I must say three finishes and two full coverage page finishes um, This is Game of Nouveau. I'll show you the picture here. I will cover it up with a real picture if there's too much glare for you to see and you can probably see which part I have completed right up in the top corner. I have a lot of work to go, but this is really fun. A lot of confetti, but really fun. Like it doesn't look like it there. The, when you look at it, it looks like, oh, there's three colors. There's blue, yellow, and black, but no, there's, a, there's 30 colors. 
Um, and one more piece of progress to show you. I've been working on this. This is the Celtic Sampler by The Needle's Praise. This is part one, which is Wallace. There we go. You should be able to see it a little better now. This is one of the UFOs I wanted to work on this year. I'm going to um, do two parts every month. So for January, what I did was I finished off uh, this one, which is part three. It goes, part one is this blue part. Part two is this one here, which I can't fill in yet because it's perfect for the B, for the needle minder. So that's gonna leak, be, be empty until the end. Um, part three is this one, which is solidly queen stitched. And I hate queen stitches and it took a really long time. Uh, all I had to do was the light pink color. All the rest was already done. It still took me a really long time, like 12 hours maybe to do the rest of the queen stitch. I hate queen stitch. I got a stitching injury from doing queen stitch. Um, I had to have a day off stitching because I like ruined my neck and shoulder. Just, I don't know, because I'm holding, putting my arm up and using two hands to hold the threads and stuff. I hate queen stitch. Yep. So there's that one. And this was my second January one. This is number four, five. This is part four down here. Um, I've decided I'll save this to do when I have another full queen stitch block. <laughs> um, all these empty spaces you see here and here, they're for metallics, which have to go in at the end. And then for February, I'll be doing this one and this one, which is, um, will be Bargello, Bargello. How do you say that? Bargello, Bargello, anyway. And it's colorful so these are my two february ones and i will just let you have a bit of a close-up look at those and i'll try not to wobble so i love this this is my favorite whip my favorite um that's all the progress i have to show you and the finishes i unfortunately can't show you the ffos because then they didn't work but because this is the thank you floss tube episode, I'm doing a giveaway. Yay! Um, it is to say thank you for subscribing to me and I have 500 subscribers now. Yay! Yay! Um, and don't get too excited. It's not a big giveaway. It's only for one person. I'm going to give away this. And what's in here is, you might have seen this on an old video. I went to Vietnam before Christmas and I went to a silk factory where they do these incredible silk embroideries. I will put up a few pictures here. They're gorgeous, just so detailed and so pretty. Um, and when I got back, oh sorry, when we went down to the gift shop, I would have loved to have bought a finished piece but I couldn't bring it back with me they weren't that expensive but I just couldn't transport them back with me so I bought some silk and they you can't choose colors or anything all you get is this thing like this of assorted silk colors and they're so pretty the colors are gorgeous whoever gets this is going to be really happy beautiful colors um, so if you want to win this please leave me a comment below just say what your favorite specialty stitch is. Don't say, I want to win. Just say what your favorite specialty stitch is. Um, if you don't have a favorite specialty stitch, just go and look one up. Go and learn one and do one and look one up because specialty stitches are fun and they're not as scary as you think. Um, don't say cross stitch or back stitch. Yeah. So yeah, leave a comment with what's your favorite specialty stitch and you could win this gorgeous silk. It's really, really nice, guys. It's so fine. It's so pretty. The colors are beautiful. And whoever wins it is really lucky. I have two of them. <laughs> I, I would thought about giving all three away, and then I thought, nah, screw you guys. I'm keeping it. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's all I have to say for today, I think. I've been very good. There's been no haul. Oh, except the patterns, but that's all. The Mirabilia patterns. Um, I haven't ordered anything. Yeah, I've been very good. I'm still waiting for my ABC stitch order to be posted. 
It's been more than two weeks. I don't know what's taking so long. I need an update. I'll have to ask them. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely stitchy week or two weeks or month or whatever. Um, I will see you in the next video and bye.